All right. Uh, who's going first? Uh, maybe. Uh, I... Okay. Uh, All right. Or who? Oh, you start. I, I, I could go first. Uh, I don't really okay. want. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe all of us. Cause... Uh, well, well, I mean, no. Anthony. Uh, I say you, uh, you can. Uh, you can do a no, coin no. toss. Okay. No. 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 Oh, oh, okay. What about what about you? No. Wait, no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, let's. No. Oh, uh, he. Okay, he. Like, he. Uh, you know. Or need a, like, maybe two and then. Okay, or you can go like in ascending order. We are descending order. Okay. All right, all right. I know that nowadays the word podcast is enough to send people into sheer panic and distraught because you can just smell the terrible financial advice and misogynistic mindsets from a mile away. Nowadays, I'd say that podcasts fall into the incredibly broad category of WMBY, which stands for White Man Blue Yeti. And the rules to fall into this category are incredibly simple. Is the mic far too close to the person's face? You know, like, like this? And is the face the mic is too close to the face of a massive fucking twit. If both of the answers to these questions are yes, you have yourself a WMBY. Oh, but black B, neither of these things have anything to do with white men or blue yetis. Uh, yeah, but my cock has nothing to do with your eyes, and yet you keep watching it! If you haven't gotten it by now, there is a reasonable stigma against podcasts, and I would know because I did an entire massive video on them. And that stigma was especially bad for a creator-led podcast on the very platform you're watching this video on, but... It wasn't always like that. Now, I want to take you back just a little bit to the period of time between 2017 and 2019. Uh, Donald J. Trump is mouth. president. Put Everybody likes Elon Musk for some reason. I realize I'm doing a bad job of making you think back positively on this period of time. Okay, how about this? These three-ish years were some of the last years where YouTube truly felt like a creator-first platform. It was nowhere near perfect, and by the end of 2019, you could really feel the platform shifting, but for the most part, content felt a lot less processed, I guess. Creators were much more willing to stretch their wings and expand into other forms of content without turning it into numbingly featureless slop. Video's already making me sound like a YouTube old head. That's... That's depressing. And podcasts during this era of YouTube were incredibly varied. They could be about making you laugh like the Misfits podcast. They could be giving creators a Joe Rogan level interview like the H3H3 podcast, or they could just be great informative pieces like the official podcast. All of these were huge hits and some are still going on to this day. However, the subject of today's video was a podcast that never really got that far off the ground, isn't remembered by anybody and has been dead for four years. Loudmouths, a podcast hosted by Wild Spartans, FPS Diesel, and Quite. I had initially found this podcast after watching so much Quite because he would plug it at the end of every single one of his videos, and I decided to watch the Quackity episode, and I really loved it. I think with hindsight, the group's chemistry is definitely what kept me coming back. Usually, when I'm watching a podcast with a guest, I only care about the guest. However, here, every single one of the hosts was distinct and stood just as tall as their guest, which is something we'll get into later. The Quackity episode was so good that I ended up tearing through all the back catalog they had at that point, watching every single new episode as it released, and just completely going on to becoming a Loudmouths fan. And little did I know, all of that fanboying I did ended up going on to affect me as a YouTuber. As a dumb little freshman slash sophomore in high school, this podcast taught me things that I would go on to burn in my mental and use in almost all of my videos. So fuck it, I decided to go ahead and write a love letter to the criminally underrated podcast that made me the depressed, degenerate, loser, terminally online scumbag I am today. Have you ever wrote a love letter to a dead person? So, what sauce does Loudmouse have that makes it so special? Well, why don't we go ahead and start with the number one thing, the hosts. Quite Wild Spartans, who I'm just gonna call Brandon now because I'm lazy, and Diesel all kill it because they have a secret weapon that for some reason feels incredibly lacking in other podcasts. They're all really, really good friends. It's so easy to tell that these three, simply put, enjoy each other's company, and it's so weird how much it feels lacking in other podcasts, even in the ones where I know the hosts are friends. Like, for example, let's use the E-Boys podcast. I find that the hosts, while all being good friends in real life, don't really have the required chemistry to pull off a podcast like this. It just always feels like there's too many hosts and one of them always ends up blending into the background while the other three conversate. 
Uh, I like this podcast, by the way, don't attack me. With Loudmouths, you got none of that. Just from episode one, you know that these guys have the fucking sauce. They take 20 seconds to introduce themselves to the audience, and then they just immediately shoot go and get into the topics. They know what you're here for and what you want, and they give it to you. And by simply watching episode one, you can immediately get who each of the hosts are and what their deal is. So why don't we go ahead and brief them real quick. Wild Spartans, aka Brandon, was the biggest at the time, and was definitely the one who was focused the most on comedy. That's not to say he didn't have knowledge he couldn't implore or take anything seriously, like for example, he is definitely the one who knows the most about YouTube the machine, it's just that he focuses the most on making you laugh. There's a part in the Smash Bros episode where he rants about the semantics of Luigi's and Mario's parents, and he keeps it going and more importantly keeps it funny for a really long time until quite yells at him to shut up, which is also really funny. So is Bowser like- why the fuck does Bowser look bigger and better than all the other ones? It's just because he's a genetic deformity. I was talking about normal mushrooms, like a normal person. So why is why is he so fucked up? No, but, but not all people look the same. All the Koopas look the same. The green oh, shells, the red shells, shells look the, the same. The ones that were heads no. <laughs> 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 the same. Moving from the biggest to the smallest, we have FPS Diesel, who is definitely the underdog of the show, if you want to frame it like that. Despite being criminally, criminally underrated to this very day, he is definitely the headiest member of the group. He's like Jizza. Not a single person is going to understand that. What I'm trying to get at is that if there's a useful nugget of information that you can take away from an episode, it's usually coming from FPS Diesel's mouth. They'd kill a puppy. They did- that did happen. And then they Some shipped the puppy- and then like the day after they fucking accidentally like shipped a- a puppy off to Japan instead of Kansas. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. should laugh at you know, that. Some dumbass employee just thought it'd be a great idea to put this puppy in an overhead bin with no air circulation. <laughs> and apparently- That's they, not funny, they, I'm not laughing! <laughs> The entire time on the flight, the fucking puppy was crying, but they wouldn't let it out. And then eventually the whimper stopped. <laughs> and quite the second biggest when the podcast began, but eventually would go on to become the biggest, was the most knowledgeable on YouTube and internet culture. And he strikes a good balance between being serious and being funny. Quiet, can I can I ask why you just put Super Mario Freddy in the Discord? Apparently he subscribed to me. Are you are you a furry? What? How the hell did you get that from me posting Super Mario Freddy? And the way these three talk is just perfect. It's hard to do more than just describe what it feels like and show funny clips, but to me, this was the perfect encapsulation of what the internet was like in 2018 to 19. And unlike E-Boys, I think each host here gets their time to shine, their time in the sun, because three is the magic number. I'm sorry, I'll see myself out. It's just three good friends shooting the shit about whatever they want to talk about that day. And I don't know about you, but I can't think of a single other podcast where the topic can so quickly transition from an incredibly deep conversation about the need to stand up for people you don't like, complete with a pastor's quote from World War II. So, like, first, he says, first they came for the socialists and I did not speak because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade uni unionist and I did not speak because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out, because I was not a Jew. And then they came for new me, and there was no one left for to speak for me. To then directly talking about dead fetuses in airplanes. Yeah, uh, now let's talk about dead fetuses. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, let's ruin that. <laughs> one of the places where the chemistry really shines is in the guest episodes. Now, I feel that in most podcasts, the host would basically just interview the guests about random shit, and that's fine. I actually find that a great way to figure out stuff about creators that you would never know otherwise. But that's not really the path that Loudmouth chose to take with their guest episodes. Since it never really got that far off the ground, a lot of the people that they interviewed were their creator friends. People like King Anna, Quackity, and Axley. And as a result of this, it never really feels like they're trying to interview these guests, and rather instead are just talking to them. It turns from a conversation with three great friends into a conversation with four great friends, and I really appreciate that. Honestly, I think more podcasts need to do this because it would completely destroy any and all awkwardness from a lack of chemistry. <coughs> and while we're on the topic of guests, I might as well bring up their best episode, which is their most popular 
the quackity one. This is an hour and a half of quackity in his prime, and to, to be clear, I'm not talking about prime, like, Minecraft, like, whatever fucking dream SMP quackity. I'm talking about this meme, weirdo, whatever the fuck this was, quackity. Telling ridiculous stories about his past, such as predators and online MMOs, slave labor for Leafy, the dangers of living in Mexico, while also having a lot of genuine and sincere moments where he talks about his beliefs and how he feels about his place in the world. You can expect that from any community but in general uh, I think I always think things happen for a reason like the leafy shit you know I've met a bunch of cool people from here too there's just a level of sincerity to this podcast that really shines through in episodes like the one with Axially okay shout out to fucking Bob Iger from Disney because if he hadn't fucking shut that shit down I wouldn't know Alex I wouldn't be here right now like I wouldn't be talking to you guys right now I wouldn't I wouldn't be a youtuber I'd probably be a fucking de drug dealer honestly I don't know what I'd be doing so, uh, shout out to Bob Iger for making millions of kids cry by shutting down their favorite game because it was the best <laughs> fucking thing that ever happened to me. There are so many of these little moments of genuine sincerity sprinkled throughout some of the episodes that you sometimes forget that this is the same podcast where they talk about a dude fucking a coconut. Oh, so, sorry, sorry, uh, a rotted coconut. Oh. Oh. Straight to coconut one last time, I begin to feel a strange wriggling sensation. <laughs> and of course that sincerity did sometimes come in the form of genuinely great advice, such as Diesel's talk about why you shouldn't just go and attack somebody that you don't like online in reference to Alinity is one that sticks to me personally. I put it in my Alice Mark video so I won't put the whole thing here, but basically my entire moral code as a creator began when I heard this for the first time. Verbalize and address your opinions and say why you think a certain thing instead of just insulting someone because if you're better at constructing those arguments now uh you know especially if you're like a like a teenager because i know a lot of my audience is when you're older that's gonna pay off i love this podcast man i could talk about it forever well, as long as forever is only 107 episodes. All good things must come to an end, and on December 28th, 2019, the 107th and final episode was published. This was definitely not planned to be the final episode, as there were constant talks within the episode itself about what they were going to do for the New Year's one, but it was. They've never disclosed why publicly. I've read that Quite and Diesel had a falling out with Brandon. That's not confirmed though, so take it with a grain of salt. Whatever the reason is, I'm content with it, honestly. I'd rather them make 107 good... Why are you showing me that one as if it's gonna- Oh, oh! I'd rather they make 106 good episodes than continue this project without any passion. Brandon has unfortunately not been doing very well numbers-wise as of late, but he seems content doing his thing. Diesel is actually finally getting some boosts due to his work on the Mama Max situation, which is awesome because he deserves it. And of course, Quiet has had the most success out of the three, but as you probably know, that is not without many a hardship. And to all three of them, I'd like to say thank you. Your podcast meant a lot to me, and even if it sounds corny, made me who I am in a sense. I have my own podcast. Fine, I'm working on a podcast. Is that what you want to hear? That's all for this video. Like and subscribe or I'll smash your grandma. I know this one's really short. Uh, I just wanted to do a little video on this podcast because I love it so much. Uh, the next video is... I'm really excited for the next video, guys. I can't lie. Sub to the second channel. Uh, follow the Twitter. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And that's all. So go fuck yourself. Diesel is Jizza, quite as Ghostface, and Brandon is Method Man.